views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Welcome, everyone, to Light on Living. I'm Light Coach Lisa, holistic nutritionist and life coach, helping to lighten the load of life's challenges. Well, a picture says a thousand words, but one single word can evoke the strongest emotion. Basically, words have the power to transform lives. How we feel dictates how we act, our behaviors and our choices that we make in life. Our language mirrors what's going on in our brains, and that creates the reality we live. When we change our language, we can change our lives. So together we learn how we can bring our desires into reality, how to awaken the power of words to finally live the life we've only dreamed about. And here with us to do that is Mary Shore. Now, Mary Shore is a national motivational speaker, Hay House author, and founder of a multi-million dollar business, and a rather interesting one at that. We are going to peek behind the scenes of the Mary movement. We are going to get empowered and learn how to tap into our, our potential with Mary Shores. Welcome, Mary. Thank you, Lisa. It's so great to be here. Oh, well, thank you so much. And I was just thinking how how much I was myself personally. Really looking forward to this show because words really are that powerful. And when I when I found out that you not only have created so many systems and this, your book, Conscious Communications, it really does matter how we communicate with others but ourselves. And before we jump into all of that, there's a reason why you've been able to create such a beautiful life for yourself. And I would love for you to share with all the listeners how, how you've, like, where you, where you came from and how you got here because of what you do. Well, it's been really quite a huge sort of path and a journey that's had all kinds of twists and turns and, <laughs> and ups and downs. And um, I, do you mean like what led up to the book? Well, yeah, we can get to the book, but you just have this really cool business that um, you started and, and changed because, out of out of necessity and out of ways. And you use yes, yeah, the book yeah, because the book really is is the, not the why, but it's part of this journey for you. Sure. So I am in. I'm a debt collector by trade, and so for and I'm a second generation debt collector. But I really wanted to go on this mission because I have this belief and this this passion that having a debt is a psychological burden. And I really want people to be able to solve their debt issues without being shamed. So I created a communications system that is based on how to make people feel good about paying a debt instead of feeling like punished. And so that just grew and grew over the years until I was able to take that professional development into the personal development realm, which is really what I wanted to do. And that um, led to me creating all of the coaching exercises in the book, as well as getting a book deal and getting published with Hay House. Oh, and how beautiful with the Hay House we all just love, and, and we, we definitely have our our sadness and happiness, joyful moments with hey, uh, with um, Louise Hay just passing. And um so glad that you were able to be a part of that with her before that happened. Um, with, when you just said that, um, the whole thought about debt being a psychological burden and, and such shame with that, like even those words right there, they, they say so much. And for you to be able to take that and turn it around and help people feel better about it, uh, like feeling good about it, what you said, right, about not being punished. That is, I think that, like, that can change your life just right there, just by yeah, having those things. I think, that, I think that when people have a debt, it actually becomes a brick wall in between them and, say, something that they want to achieve in their life, like buying oh. a home 
or getting married or even applying for a certain job. And if you trace back the root cause of that, I think it creates a feeling of and a belief of unworthiness mm. in the mind. And therefore, that is what that is why there's a brick wall there. And so it's just so important to understand how to, how to move past that. And also, um, you know, I do just want to take a moment to honor Louise Hay because she has been my idol for so many years in Mm -hmm. life. And I did get to meet her in February of 2013. It was actually the last women's retreat that she held herself at Miraval. And at that time, of course, I mean, I just looked up at her like she was, you know, larger than life and the biggest (laughs) thing ever. And, And my wildest dreams came true when I got an opportunity to publish with the company that she founded, you know, at 58 years old. Yes. Oh my goodness. And I, I do. I love that moment. Thank you for doing that. And, and, uh, and with Louise, actually her, she's well known for her affirmations and you have affirmations and you share those things. And, and do you have affirmations that you say every day to, to yourself to keep you going? And I am really big on affirmations. I have a, I have an entire chapter on it in the book and affirmations in the beginning did not come easy to me. So I, figured out my own method of creating them. And my daily practice was writing a page of affirmations a day. And so I did that for one straight year, every single day. And the result is I have thousands and thousands of of affirmations. Oh, and I got to read a bunch of them actually on your site, which is is filled with them and and everything. when you say it was difficult for you even to, to get to an affirmation, is that because, if for anybody what, who it's difficult for to do affirmations, is that because we can't access the words or the feeling is there first? Like, if you can walk us through how that goes in our brain, like how does our brain work when it comes to words and feelings? Is first or last or how it works? Oh, I, I love all your spunkiness around affirmations. <laughs> So it can be a complicated thing, and and we're told a lot of information about affirmations. And a lot of the information that we're given and the instructions we're given can seem very confusing and also can make it seem Mm -hmm. far-fetched. So, you know, my resistance, my I can only talk about, you know, what my own personal resistance has been. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I share that, a lot of people also say, yes, I felt the same way. So, for example, when I do affirmations, it's very important that they're always congruent with my truth. Mm. So I can't say I'm happy, healthy, wealthy, and alive if those things aren't true. Right. So I need my affirmations to match up with my truth, whereas some people are really good at doing affirmations that are um, asking for something in the future as if it's already happened. Okay. And so those – so – I think um, I think that those affirmations are great for the people when those kind of affirmations juice them, but those affirmations were not juicing me. Mm-hmm. I just felt kind of silly and ungrounded. So what I did was I created affirmations that are true for me, but they're still really exciting and juicy. And I do that by a certain um, method that just helps you create affirmations that are perfect for you. Okay. You know, I love that you actually said that makes me feel silly and ungrounded because um, I, it brought to mind the one time I really do do use the uh, the future affirmations when, say, I'm not feeling well. And so I, I, I'll say, you know, thank you or I, thank you for my health or I'm feeling great already or something like that. And I think, no, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> and so I'm trying to believe in it, but that's like a, a common one. And I think, so what would be, you know, if, if you were to take somebody who's just not feeling well, maybe they have a headache, maybe their stomach is upset and they were to um, do a more congruent one, what would be something that could match up? Just give an example as of, of that. Sure. Well, and I want to say the reason why you felt that that moment of resistance, (laughs) it's because we all have, you know, neural networks in our subconscious mind. And so your subconscious understands that, yes, when you feel sick, you're sick. And it also is, has built in mechanisms when things don't agree or when things aren't our truth, you get that little knot. So what I do is I reframe the things that are true. Like, um, so my affirmation might be my immune system and, and, Cells are kicking in to 
to combat this, whatever it is. I mean, that's mm. just off the top of my head, but I might say yes. also my, my cells are regenerating at every moment of every day. Oh, and it gives you hope to have a better moment that you might be feeling. I like that. That makes sense. I would, yeah. Right. I would, okay. Yeah, or I, much. So I, so those are asking statements or they're saying, you know, what I, I am saying it in a way that I'm not tripping any disagreement in my mind. So mm-hmm. my cells are regenerating every day in every way, or, you know, you could just go on and on for that. Whatever feels good. You know, you could right. be grateful that you could be grateful that this cold or whatever you have, you can be grateful that it's given you pause to rest. Right. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful that here's one I would do. I'm grateful that I listen to my body when I need to rest. Mm. Oh, that's it. Oh, I love that one actually. And it makes you feel good. It makes you feel loved. Actually, that's one of the lines I was reading it and it says that, um, you have, I know it was on your blog, you had done an interview with somebody and they said the first thing to start off with was self-love. And I love that the gratitude is self-love. Well, it's global love, but it's self-love in that way you can, that, that really is congruent with how we, we want to feel and how we do feel. That's right. That's right. And those affirmations that make you feel good are the ones that if you get in a daily practice of using the ones that have you, that make you have that feeling, then because of the intentions you're setting when you're doing those affirmations, over time, you will begin to carve out new neural networks. Mm, I love that because we can change our brain. We can change the way it's wired. Right. And that's really the power That's really the power. And, you know, what I found was I needed to be super consistent. So, and a lot of people ask me, like, well, were you writing the same affirmations every day? Honestly, I didn't have any rules. So, you know, sometimes they were the same affirmations every day. But because I wrote me probably over 100 a day, and it only took me three to five minutes, um, sometimes I might start off with the ones from the day before just to get me going. And then I would just continue. So it was really important for me to write releasing statements as part of my affirmation practice. And And actually, we we are going to zip into commercial, but now I'm excited about releasing affirmations because I think that's important to do that. So let's come back with releasing affirmations. (laughs) Okay. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Welcome back to The Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Art Council. And we are here speaking with Mary Shore author of the newly released book, uh, Conscious Communications. And Mary, just before we left, we were really, I'm having so much fun just talking about um, affirmations, but it, when you, just before the break, you said you wrote releasing affirmations. And that made me think about 
how we do have limiting words. And that made me think of how you said when we hit a brick wall, we just can't get any further. So I, I, I'm so excited to hear about what releasing affirmations are and how that I, I believe already that that's going to help people who are really feeling stuck right now and, and stopped. So first of all, A, is that true? And okay, let's hear about releasing affirmations. Well, we have, you know, we were talking about how affirmations can create new neural networks in your mind, in your subconscious programming. And um, we all know, and I've heard it said on your show before, that we have tens of thousands of thoughts a day, and, and the majority of them are the same as the day before. Well, these thoughts are really coming from all of our previous programming in our subconscious mind. And so I thought I wanted to write releasing affirmations that would help me let go or loosen my grip on some of my some of my story, right? Because, mm. you know, I really think that the story we're constantly telling ourselves about ourselves becomes our identity because every time we tell that those stories, it connects us back to the past and it strengthens the oh. neural network and the belief system we have that is associated to that particular story. Yeah. And in the book, I talk about, you know, mine was a story of abandonment. So abandonment in childhood, which led to abandonment in relationships, and so the affirmation I wrote was, I release my fear of abandonment. And it's really important that I say that with a lot of emotional intensity and intention. Mm -hmm. And the magic is the way I follow it up, which is, I release my fear of abandonment. I am surrounded by unconditional love and support. Aww. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank it's, you. It's like getting a little hug with your words after, you know, that fear of relief. Yeah, and so what I'm doing is, you know, I'm aware, I'm aware of the abandonment beliefs in my mind, and, you know, I ask myself, what am I really needing? And what I really need is unconditional love and support. So I release my fear of abandonment, and I am, so I am is a very powerful way of saying affirmations that when you're saying I am, you're really declaring the qualities that you want to be true are true. Oh, okay. So, I do, you know, and that's kind of like, you know what, that's a dream of itself. I know you, you have Ignite Your Dreams, um, and you have that workbook. The, I'm just thinking about that right now, because one of my biggest questions I was going to ask you was, was about dreams, but I'll, I'll tell you how this is tying in for me. When you uh, acknowledge your fears at first, and you want to just loosen that grip, and I love how you said that. Loosen the grip sounds so not as scary as letting go, releasing, you know, an ending. Um, but then you you thought, okay, well, what's the what's what do I want? And that was like that would be like a dream. So if somebody, my question was going to be, and this is why it's so important, is what if somebody doesn't actually even know what their dream would be? But now I'm starting to think that maybe if someone doesn't know what their dream is, if they just looked at what their fears are, the dream would be to, you know, not be afraid of that and have the opposite of it. There's so many fun ways that you can connect yourself to what you truly want in life. Aww. I know. One simple way is really if you make a list of all the things you don't want and then you just ask what's the opposite of this. So I learned that because so many times when I'm teaching workshops or retreats, um, people will tell me I don't know what I want. Yes. Or when I ask them what I want or what they want, they will respond and start telling me a list of things that they don't want. So I might say, well, what do you want? And they go, well, I'm really tired of having all these arguments with my husband. So I can say, so what you want is a peaceful relationship and a loving relationship with your husband. Um, I know one of mine was like, you know, I really, really want my home life with my kids to be peaceful and for them to get their homework done and their chores done. Ah. And <laughs> that was a good know. one. <laughs> it's, it's so true. In my house, I have a, a 16 and a 17-year-old boy. And so I definitely... Um, write affirmations that support those dreams. And then what I find is it's like those affirmations or whatever I'm focused on makes it primes the muscle in my brain to supply me with ideas to help mm. me move forward towards the things that I want. Wow. Oh, I like how that's worded. That actually, and that reminds me of doing, because I was lucky enough to do the workbook um, exercises that you, you know, you, that you've created in, in Ignite Your Dreams, which is, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're trying to talk about how do you even know your dreams, which I love that and the supporting of it. Um, 
I, I you just brought up something really cool. You said about um, let's just say one woman was thinking, I just don't want to have any more arguments, you know, with my husband or, or say it's children or anything like that. Arguments really are a bunch of words that are uh, uh, like feelings being expressed. And these are words being exchanged between people. So words that we say not only to ourselves but to other people really create our lives as well, don't they? Yes, because everything you say, everything you do, every action you take, every word that comes out of your mouth in a relationship is either going to cleanse that relationship or it's going to clog it. And Ooh. I have an entire chapter in my book called To Cleanse or Clog, That is the Question. And it really just starts with exactly what you said. So if I think of cleanse or clog is my easy check-in way to make sure that the choices that I'm making in life are connecting to the things I want. I just finished um, – reading chapter four in, in the book and chapter four is all about your choices and your probabilities. And in chapter four, it asks you to write a, a list of six, six things that you want to be true. So I think in Ignite Your Dreams, you probably wrote a list of like the Zen 10. Yes, so, I love the Zen 10. Yeah. <laughs> so then what if you, you know, really start to design your choices in a way that's either going to connect you closer to what you wrote in your Zen 10 or move you farther away and so cleanse or clog is really a way of checking in to say, so like, for example, if on my Zen 10 I wrote, I would like to lose 20 pounds, but um, it's Labor Day today and I'm going out to a cookout, and if I just feed myself with all the wonderful brownies and apple pies and, you know, whatever kind of is going to food that's going to be on that dessert table, then that's really moving me further away from, or, you know, if mm. I'm... If I want to lose 20 pounds, I can honestly just look at a piece of food and I can say, will this cleanse my body or clog it? Mm -hmm. And I know if I'm looking at an apple, that's going to cleanse. But if I'm looking at that apple pie with ice cream, that's going to clog. And so as long as I'm keeping my choices in that 80% cleanse category, then I will be moving myself closer to what I want because cleansing really means connecting you to that life of your dreams. But mm -hmm. this rule works in wellness. It works in your relationship because, you know, that's how I introduced this by saying everything you say or do in your relationship mm -hmm. is creating deeper connection or it's driving a disconnection. It's all yeah. cleanse or clog. How about yeah. in your finances? Like, all the choices you make on how you spend or invest your money is either cleansing your finances or clogging it. And your career, you know, we all have these careers that um, sometimes might feel chaotic and out of balance. And so cleanse or clog is a great way to just check in with your career decisions. If this if, you know, changing this job or taking this promotion or writing this book or becoming a coach gets you closer to your overall life dreams, then that's a cleanse. But if making that move is actually taking you further away, then it's disconnecting you from your dreams. Yeah, I love that the um, – I'm just writing this down, but cleanse is really meaning connecting you to your dreams. And I have an interesting question about this. You, you just made me think about a bazillion things. I'm thinking finances, like if you're shopping and you think, is this, is this purchase? you know, cleansing or clogging. And it, and once you make that decision, let's say we take the apple situation over, you know, the brownies, and we say, yes, I'm going to have this apple. And I going back to the very beginning of what you said about um, how in response, like a psychological burden or is it a shaming or does it feel good? If we choose the apple and we know it's a cleansing, then to have those words run through our heart, our minds and hearts that say, um, you're not being punished to have the apple. You You feel great about having the apple. Yeah, and let me add to that. You know, it's very important to always remember that you're you're doing this against an 80/20 rule because mm -hmm. trying to be perfect 100% of the time in and of <laughs> itself is a clog. So, oh. you know, you, you can't take it to the extreme, but also like checking in about the outfit. So, if I'm at the mall shopping because I'm, say, a little bit depressed and I'm just wandering from store to store to get that little dopamine hit that I think yeah. I'm going to have when I'm right. shopping, then that's a clog. But if I am like, say I've got um, – Say I've got that big TED Talk coming up, and getting that new outfit is going to make me feel powerful inside yeah. my body, and it's mm -hmm. going to create like a lot of powerful chemicals going inside that are going to support me to my dream, yeah. then it's a cleanse. Oh, that's actually interesting that you took the very same act of shopping and purchasing the outfit. However, there's good intentions and reasons, and 
not so helpful, supportive, good in- and you know intentions. Um, I have a question for you on this one. I go, see, now this is my opportunity. I get to ask you even personal stuff, so, so I, you could help me. This would be great. I, I really struggle with, um, I love the words, you know, I try to choose them carefully for me. But what if I'm in a situation, I'm, in a, I'm having a conversation with somebody. Maybe I know them, maybe I don't know them very well at all. And the, I can tell that their, their words, their conversation, the topic of choice of what they're going to speak about is going to clog me. I, I don't want to listen to what they're saying because I know it's not going to be healthy for me. So how does one, what would be the best way to handle something so that you're not being selfish, but you're being um, self-supportive? And how, how would in the, work? in the book, I definitely talk about a method of detaching yourself from things that no longer serve you. So, for example, Ooh. one of the suggestions it gives is that, you know, when you get off work, and this, this really speaks to this conversation you're talking about a friend that you know is going to be more draining, yeah. then um, what I suggest is on your drive home for work, you really try to stay off of telephone conversations or cell phone conversations because typically people are riled up at that time of day, and it's really important that you give your mind some space to rest in that 10 or 15-minute drive home so that when you go into your family or your pets or your kids or whatever, you know, is waiting for you at home that you've given yourself some space to declutter mm-hmm. a little bit. But if you just jump in the car with that friend who's going to complain at about her horrible boss, her horrible coworkers, her, her abusive husband, then what is that doing to you on your drive mm-hmm. home? It has clogged you. So that's really important that you learn how to take space for yourself. But also, you know, I have just, I was just having this conversation with a friend that when you are on a personal transformation journey, you know how they say that that journey is like an onion and you're always peeling through different layers? Yeah. Well, I think the same is true for your friendships. Like you will begin mm. to change your friendships and you need to learn to, it's important if you can be graceful about setting a boundary with friendships or family members that you know are going to clog you. And you can do it in a way, you know, I think of that a lot of people think that maybe they have to confront the person about this behavior. Right. No, 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 not true. You know, you really just need to validate them like, and really find a graceful way of moving on or, you know, just, just letting that person know that now's not a good time to talk. Just be, and, you know. and speaking of the graceful movie on, we will be going to commercial right now, literally, and be coming right back with Mary Shore. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. We're back, and we're speaking with Mary Short, author of the newly released Conscious Communications, 
And just before the break, I love doing this recap here. Um, spe- speaking about just um, having those healthy boundaries in our own communication of what we're putting out and what we're receiving. And Mary, I love how you were talking about graceful boundaries. Um, I love the word graceful so much. And in in setting boundaries, that it does take courage to do that. And there's something that you've actually created that made me think of this is that you you have something called fearless ambition. I would love for you to share with us, first of all, wow, two great words, like terrific together. Um, tell us where that came from and what it is, because I already love it. Fearless Ambition is the name of my newsletter that goes out weekly, and there's always an action-oriented article along with a free download worksheet that has the steps on it. So I'm always, I'm really big, and I think that my superpower in life is creating these workbooks. So like you've got Ignite Your Dreams. We now have a companion guide journal that goes right along with the book that you can fill out so that you don't, and I love this journal for the book because it has all the pages numbers in the journal that connect to that part of the book so that you don't have to um, make a bunch of marks in your book to remember where you are. And Mm -hmm. also the book takes the time to explain like why these exercises are healthy for your brain and body. And um, so, yeah, the Fearless Ambition newsletter is also an exclusive Facebook group. So we've got... um, We've got about 2,500 members in the Facebook group, and then what they do is the they can download all the like the freebies or the free swag that we give away. And if we're working on a new workbook, a lot of times we'll give it to the people in the group first, so they can play around with it and give us feedback and support each other. I love that you're so big on support. So that was even the one thing you said at the beginning, we're right, talking about releasing the fears of abandonment, but then attaching it, you know, or following it up with saying, I have, you know, unconditional loving, supporting people around me. And this is, that's what I feel like when I think about the Facebook group. I feel like that would be that. Um, if anybody's feeling alone out there, that would be certainly something that would, would help support them. And, and you're offering a gift, actually, um, to all the listeners. And I believe that's, is that part of it? The fearless, is it the, um, ah, you have um the work the workbook. Yeah, the workbook that you've already completed. So I'd yeah. love to hear what your what your um experience was creating the creating the exercises in the workbook. So that it's called Ignite Your Dreams. And I'm sure we've given you a link to share. You can also find it at maryshores.com. There's just a button right there. It says Ignite Your Dreams and you'll be able it's to download lovely. the workbook and join us. It's actually a pretty workbook. Book. That's the one thing I first of all noticed. I thought, oh, it's so beautiful to work with, and I love the, you know, your the swirls on it and the colors. It makes you want to do this. You actually want to go and do the work in there. <laughs> all right. Thank you for saying that. The all of the workbooks are beautifully, beautifully illustrated by my assistant and creative genius um, Roxanne. She really Aww. takes these exercises and has them come to life on uh, in full color in a way that. I just think it's, you're right. I mean, it just inspires you to keep going through the workbook. And if I may, I do, I actually do want to take this moment to share with you. Um, what really, it's actually an experience. I wasn't, and this is what's fun. Um, and, and you can even, uh, help us out with this one of how this works with the brain. Cause I couldn't tell you, I just know what happened. I, I was going through the exercises and I, without thinking of the actual, you know, current, it's not a problem, but it's a situation that I have to deal with right now. I actually came up with the answer, my answer, my, you know, my truth to it, like an hour and a half after. But it was, I wasn't even writing about it. I was, the exercises had nothing to do with it. But by doing those exercises, uh, you were helping me like by those, those little questions to align myself to my truth, which it, it kind of set a path in motion that I was walking step by step along and then out of the blue came, Oh, that's what I want to do. This is how I want to handle it. And now I have to figure out the words. <laughs> so what you're experiencing is the effect of when you are priming your, the muscle in your brain to give you the information you need to move forward. So you create these synchronicities for yourself because when you really focus on the, um, items in the personal development challenge of Ignite Your Dreams, then that is typically how it happens. Or some days I'll be in the shower and it'll be like four days later and the perfect thing will come to me. Like it's just the perfect idea that will 
solve the problem I'm having or it will create the opportunity that I'm looking for. And then the next thing you know is like beautifully all these doors around you start opening. I have another friend that was doing that and she got to the end where you do the one page action plan. And um, because of her circumstances, she actually did that exercise first. And the weirdest thing happened within like 24 hours of doing that action plan. She got like four huge opportunities that just came to her from out of the blue. Oh, and you actually write magic is when obstacles melt away. I wrote that down because I loved it. (laughs) Yeah, it was like magic for sure. And I just, the work in this development challenge and the work in conscious communications, it it just will blow your mind. It is that life-changing. My friends call me the Rosetta Stone of manifestation and the Rosetta Stone of transformation. Oh my, you know, and that's actually, and I think one of the biggest fears people have in the beginning is, and this is because as a coach myself, I hear them, they say, well, I don't know what, you know, they're they're back there. I don't know what I want, but I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know if I can even do it. It needs to get there. I think that all the time, but it doesn't stop me because I just know that you talk about synchronicities in there as well um, and how, what you said, priming the brain and aligning to what it is you kind of want, or at least what you don't want. And then like those little steps go all there. Yeah, and Lisa, I love what your clients are sharing with you because I truly do believe that when we want something or we have a goal in life, and even when we're focused on it, but if our belief system is not in alignment with that goal, then what happens is we become stuck. And the reason we become stuck is that deep down inside, we don't really believe that we're capable of doing this. Um, or it could be that we know we're capable of doing it, but we just don't know how. Like it's it's almost mm-hmm. like we need someone to take us by the hand and say, oh, you know, you want to write a book. Here's step one, here's step two, step three, and then you can do it. But until you really have a blueprint of how to accomplish that, you feel very stuck. And so going through going through this kind of work really helps remove all of those obstacles, and it's a beautiful, beautiful transform, transformative process. Mm, and, you know, transformation, it starts, you don't even see it really. Like, you know, it's in slow motion or behind the scenes. But I know a lot of people will say, well, how long is the course and how long is this? And it really is different for everybody. And, and I, I'm sure you can even attest to saying this, like people transform at different rates, different times. Right. Yeah. Ignite Your Dreams is a very short commitment. So someone can do it in one day. So I have friends that have taken it on vacation or I have um, followers that have taken it on vacation and they've done it in like a day. Or I have people that go through it. They decide they want to do one part each day. So it takes them five or six days. And then I have people that really take their time and do it over a number of months. But even if you do it in one day, like all of the, the little exercises, you know, you're still continuing to transform, you know, a year, two years, three years down the line. Because this plants little seeds in your mind. Oh, I love that. Yes, like they are little seeds and they do get different waters and nothing. And it's just expand on that one page. Because I, that was one of the things I specifically wanted to talk to you about. Cause I, uh, first of all, I kind of chuckled when you said, you know, we can write up a business plan, pages and pages and pages, which most people don't read, and we're not going to read again, but the one page really does help. Can you walk us through a little bit of that one page, just so Absolutely. the listeners can hear, because they're going to want this. I already know that. <laughs> So I love, love, love one-page action plans, and I am a serial entrepreneur, which means that, you know, I started multiple business, I've written this book, I'm a public speaker, and I'm always... I'm always doing and creating new things, and it really brings me a lot of joy to do that. But one of the biggest things that brings me joy is showing other people how to do what I did. Mm -hmm. Because anybody who wants to do it can do it. Or maybe someone's goals are completely different than mine because, you know, maybe they're not a career woman and their goals are they want to be the greatest mom that they can be and they have time in their space to create mom clubs or cheerleading practices or, you know, they can really do a lot of things. So the one-page action plan is designed so that you you ask yourself what you want to be true. Like what is one thing you want to be true? That would be considered your end result goal. Mm -hmm. So like I could use mine when I wanted to write a book. So my end result was I wanted to publish a book with Hay House. Now I have to ask myself the question, what are six things that need to be true in order to accomplish this goal? And as a matter of fact, like I said, just yesterday, I wrote a list of six new things. Oh, okay. And my end result goal was happiness. 
So I didn't even put like book, put my end result goal, happiness. And then I said, what are six Mm -hmm. things that need to be true in order to feel happy right now? And it was like feeling healthy in my body, in my energy. Um, Again, I have to bring it up about the boys and the chores and the homework. (laughs) That's okay. You know, and I, so I just put six things that are very meaningful to me right now because humans are meaning-making machines. So once you have your your six things that need to be true in order to achieve this, then you can start breaking down each one of those six items and you can create a to-do list of three things per item. So, you know, I don't want the I don't want to lose the listeners in the details, but mm-hmm. seriously just the, the the workbook's free that she's talking about. You can grab it and you can do all the exercises or you can just jump to the one page action plan. Yes, and that's at it oh, so it's gonna be at MaryShores.com and what Mary's talking about is called Ignite Your Dreams Workbook. It's, there's just twenty six pages, but you can just do the one page. Honestly, I read I went through the whole thing, like I wanted to read all of it and then I did I pick and chose where I kind of, you know, felt like I could do because I want to have an understanding. But yes, you I love that you said that we're all meaning making machines. That is so beautiful. And I wanted to, I'm going to just check this ahead of time before this commercial. I'm going to ask the question and we're going to we'll go into commercial, but you, you made a statement, anybody who, who wants to can. And my question on that, because I think that's so important because I was really thinking about it. I'm like, gosh, yeah, if I want to, then I can. But does it matter? This is back to the beginning. We talked about the shopping, how it could be your, with your attention. What if somebody wants to do something, but it's because they feel they should versus they want to like maybe they feel like they should lose 20 pounds and get healthy but they don't really want to because they just don't want to and that's what i wanted to ask people but you can start that but we will be going to commercial in about 30 seconds (laughs) sure i'm happy to uh start off with that question right off the when we come back from the break it'll be exciting to talk about yeah and and if i can squeeze this in before is um there are a lot of people that really feel like "I, i know i should but and I kind of want to because I think it's going to be good but I'm afraid to so when we come back I'm already in the <laughs> set Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. We're back. We're speaking with Mary Shores, author of newly released Conscious Communications. And really taking that word right from there, Conscious Communications, when the language we use, the words we use, we are communicating with ourselves. And I was just before break asking you, and it was language at its peak here, when we say to ourselves, oh, I have to do this, or I should do this, or I want to do this. How does that transform into our like, how do we get to that? How do we know when it's I want to or should or have to? 
Well, I think that the the book has many, many, many different sections where it's going to talk about how to check in with yourself and knowing when you're doing something that's in alignment with what you really want. Because, you know, that concept of alignment just in general really used to confuse me, and I didn't understand what being in alignment meant. And after many years of studying it, I did come to understand that it's when our thoughts, our words, our feelings our choices, our actions are all in alignment with what we want. And so the uh-huh. issue that I'm hearing in in your scenario is that somebody says they want something, but their feelings and thoughts are not in alignment. And right. so and this, this is an opportunity for them to figure out, okay, does this mean that we need to change our thoughts to match up with the dream? Or maybe we need to change the dream to match up with the thoughts. So like right. you're saying, if it's somebody else wants it for you, So let's just say, for example, that I know somebody who would make a great artist. And I'm always telling her, you would make such a great artist and everybody would love your work and blah, 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 blah. But she doesn't see that about herself. Or maybe she thinks her work just isn't on par. So she could take a step to figure out, does she really want to be an artist or is she okay just enjoying art but not making a career of it? I certainly can't make that choice for her. Right. Um, so that's one example of other people wanting something for you. Mm-hmm. But it may be that, you know, I, I love in the movie The Bronx Tale because he says the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. Mm-hmm. So if my friend is just ignoring her purpose, then that's one thing. But what if I'm just trying to push somebody into doing something? You know, we've all got those people. Like maybe your mother wanted you to be a nurse, but you really wanted to be a teacher or a businesswoman Mm -hmm. or a fitness instructor. So in that case, that's not the same kind of thing. Right. In that case, we really need to know what's in our own hearts. And in that case, we want to change the dream to match our thoughts. But in the first scenario, maybe we want to change, pivot our thoughts to match what we're capable of. Okay. I'm super excited. I am going to ask for your help right now on something. I have a person in my life who absolutely wants to change or create a dream for me that I don't have. I really don't want, and I'm going to tell you what this is right away. I don't, I don't love the water. I want to go to the beach. I want to look at it, but I don't want to go into the ocean. I don't want to go into the lake. And I have a person in my life who is determined that I'm going to love it, but I'm like, I really don't. So I get my back up and my words are not fair. I'm like, I don't even want to talk about this. Why do you, I, I don't even want to listen. And I get straight, you know what you said about it's either going to empower, like you're shutting somebody down or you're opening it up. How, how well, you're, one, probably, you're probably really clogging every time you have yes. to think about this because yes. it's got to cause you anxiety. Yes. <laughs> and exactly. so I would put that in the category of this person is projecting their own love of the water yes. onto Absolutely. you. Aww. So just like the mom is projecting her admi- ad- admiration for women who become nurses onto their daughter or women exactly. who become teachers. So, so this what does one is, do? Yeah. Well... Um, I think that, I think that there's all kinds of things that you, can oh, do. Yay. Okay. So I know, I know what I would do, but that may be very different than, than what you can do. So you may have to set a boundary with that person and you may say, you know, I'm so glad you love the water and, um, I hope that you understand that I am really just happy with being on the beach and, um, you know, encourage them to leave you alone by saying, you know, it just makes me feel anxious to even talk mm. about the water. Right. Like really, really help them understand how that is making you feel. Right. Because yeah. maybe sometimes we're out of alignment with our actions because we start saying things like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to try it tomorrow. Mm. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to walk in the water tomorrow <laughs> instead yeah. of. So we're kind of avoiding and delaying the situation instead of saying, you know, there's something about the water that really just makes me feel a lot of anxiety. And it makes me go from really enjoying my time at the beach to now I don't even want to be on the beach because all Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do is get away from the anxiety of these conversations. Right. So, and you know what, that, that anxiety can really saturate your mood uh, into that. So and I'm just thinking right now how so many people are listening and it could be, yeah, maybe they, they do want to start a healthier diet, but they are delaying it. Like, oh, on Monday, I'll do that. Um, but really the fear is like, so, so your book is Conscious Communications. Um, that I believe too that it, that whole, your whole book really helps people 
like you said, a line or connect or at least figure out what the dream is. If it's really a dream that they do want, like if it needs to be changed or, you know, going backwards. I think that the conscious communications are actually going into the consciousness of your, you know, communicating style with yourself to you and your dreams. I, yeah, the book is all of that and so much more because the book is going to help you get yourself, your behaviors, your choices, all of these things into alignment. And it's also going to teach you just enough about how to let go of, you know, the the traumatic stories in your life, how to empower yourself to be moving forward with the things that um, you need in order to get you to where it, wherever it is that you're going. The, when I was thinking about, how, like, just even think, okay, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? And when you even said you, um, you, you knew you wanted to write a book, you wanted to have it be published by Hay House, and then earlier you mentioned that you got to meet Louise Hay in 2013. Um, this already shows me, you know, that there's been it's taken some time, and and I'm so pr- I'm so proud, I'm so happy, and then I'm also really happy to get to speak with you. But this also goes to show people not to not to worry about the time of how long things do take. Well, and for me, you know, I had I had to go through my own barrier beliefs, and the writing process itself was um, com- uh, all of two and a half years. So it's a it's a long and fun and absolutely life changing journey. And I was just going to share with you for a moment. I got a note from the list from one of the um, readers of the book. Would you like to hear it? I would love to. Yes. Okay, so I love this note. It came in from someone who is just started reading the book. She says, thank you, Mary, for writing this book and sharing your life stories and inspiring words. I'm only in Chapter 2, but I've been absorbing every word, writing pages of notes and thoughts in my journal. And I've said out loud, yes, so many times. Aww. So much of this makes sense and rings true for me. I'm so excited to keep going. At the risk of being too open, I've lost myself. I felt crippled by anxiety and self-doubt. I've been taking myself out of the game, and I've become a spectator in my own life. She goes on to talk about how she realizes from the book that she is connecting she's connecting more with the past traumatic stories instead of where she's at right here right now. And she even quotes out of the book. So I just wanted to share that little note. Oh, well, thank you very much. And we're very happy that that reader is, you know, changing a person's life and her changing her life, it changes the world. Like it, it, it really doesn't, does. It doesn't stop just there. And I'm. can you just share with us then, what is that whole thing about saying yes out loud? Why, why do we want to say yes out loud? What does that do? Well, for her, I think it was just resonating so much that – Every time she was reading a line that she just was saying, yes, like, yes, this is, this is the thing. And a lot of people have come to me and said, like, this is, this is the book. Like, they can somehow feel it inside of them that they just know this is the moment things change for them. And I love, to how you mentioned about Louise Hay because, um, you know, the ripple effect when you talked about changing lives, I've tried to think – I wonder what the ripple effect of just Louise and her powerful, powerful self, what that has been, not just on the amount of lives she's changed, but all of the people that she has brought into the world as a result of her success, like the Wayne Dyers and Marianne Williamson and Deepak Chopra's of the world. Yes. And you know what that goes to show right there, and that speaks of, of the support that we've been threading through this whole show because, you know, we're, nobody is alone. We we can choose to be alone, but that just means we're disconnecting. And the support is really that connection and it can help lift you so much higher. And I would love, can you share with everybody right now, where can they find the book, your book, Conscious Communications? The book is available anywhere you can buy books. As a matter of fact, I had the thrill of my life when I found out it is actually in Barnes & Noble stores all over the country. Um, if you go into a Barnes & Noble to look for the book, I do recommend checking the zip code first because sometimes in larger cities, it will be in one store but not another. But literally, the book is all over the country. Um, you can find it online at Amazon.com. You can find it at HayHouse.com. It's even on Target.com, uh, <laughs> where you can buy a book. 
you can buy this book. So, you know, I don't know about smaller retailers, but, yeah, I was so jazzed and excited that the book made it into Barnes & Noble. It is. And congratulations on that because that takes a big um, a commitment to the dream that you had um, and what the book will do and how it can do and change those lives. And with that being said, too, if anybody can't maybe go out and get that book right now, you you have offered this uh, beautiful workbook, um, Ignite. I, well, sorry, I was going to say the whole link here, but where could they go to get the workbook? And and, and that's a free gift that you're offering everybody. So I just want you to yeah, share the, it. The offer for everyone is... That is listening to the show. If you would like to get to know the work a little bit more, please, 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 I would love for you to have Ignite Your Dreams, 26 pages, full color, absolutely beautiful. You will really enjoy filling that out. And, um, again, you can find the book on on Amazon or Hay House or just or just anywhere. And um, we definitely would love to see you in the Facebook group, Fearless Ambition. Yes, and there's more support right there. So I'm actually going to post the link as soon as we the show ends. Um, and so anybody can just go grab there from the link. And Mary, I just, I've had such a pleasure and I love speaking about words and affirmations. And thank you so much for being here. My pleasure, Lisa. So exciting. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. And I, everybody, go get the book. <laughs> Thanks for listening.